Hi, I'm Jodie Rizzo O'Brien from AWI Extension South Australia. We're here at Kyan Cutter at the EID workshop for productivity and profitability. It's my pleasure to introduce our case study with Chris Lim from Lim Farms near Woodna. Thanks, Chris. Lim Farms, south of Woodna. Um, I don't know, I guess I'm your go-to sheep person. I um, go to a, quite a few farmer events throughout the year and I'm the one everyone laughs at when the sheep price goes down and, uh, and uh, the, you know, anybody that jokes about sheep generally looks at, it looks in my direction, so I'm that guy. Um, so um, that's sort of what we do. I don't know I need to go through that. Sort of 1,500 ewes, do a bit of cropping as well. And we um, are probably a little unusual to, um, I guess, some well, livestock producers in that we feed lot all our own uh, lambs through to... Um, so we're what we term or what the stock agent terms as a, a breeder and a, and a finisher. Um, doesn't seem like everybody does that. Does that. Um, and uh, I guess that gives me a bit of a unique insight into when you breed your own sheep, just how well you can get them to grow out and the finish. So, um, bit of a longer term history. Dad weighed sheep uh, and what particularly weighed fleeces way back in the 70s. So, our um, efforts to individually identify animals started a long, long time ago. Um, so, the problems are with that system that if you measure one thing, you tend to make um, have negative effects on a lot of other variables. So, um, while he was just weighing fleeces, uh, the sheep got smaller, the, the wool got dense and yellow, and you finished up with um, heavy wool, but it was just shit stuff. So, the moral of that story is um, don't measure one thing, measure many things and try and make gains on more variables than just one, because one will bugger up everything else. So. Um, came home from the College of Knowledge, excited about sheep. Um, individual animal recording was sort of just beginning. We could do EID reasonably e easily. Um, it was just the beginnings of, you know, sending away a wool sample and getting a micron test back. So um, I decided I wanted to do measure three things, so fleece weight, body weight and micron and try and make improvements on all three. So. Um, Although you can make fast gains measuring one variable, like I said, you bugger up something else. So you've got to be happy with uh, slow genetic or slower genetic improvement, but in, all, in three areas. So, um, so that's a pretty graph showing sort of if you track individual animals, there's some there with eight kilos of wool and, you know, 70 odd kilos of body weight. And there's some there with three kilos of wool and only weigh 45. So... Um, just shows you the genetic sort of variability within your flock. Um, I guess that's just a, a sort of a visual, visual effect of... Um, that's obviously only looking at two different traits. Uh, initially, we uh, put the... Uh, had a number printed on the tag, and in the shearing shed, it was a case of um, actually rubbing the wool wax off the tag number, because most of the time, their, ear, their tag numbers are too dirty to read, so... Shearers love that. You stand there and rub the, shear, the sheep's ear while you're trying to read the number. And then we actually employed someone extra in the shed to stand up the back with a 44-gallon drum and we used to yell the number across the shed and tell them what number. Um, and then we used to take the side samples off the in, in the yard outside um, and that meant I had to read the tag numbers twice, so the visual numbers. So you can understand that it was a time... Um, commitment and we were happy to do it at the time because there wasn't any other way of doing it but as EID came along I was pretty happy to adopt it so even without a 50% um, rebate that the, we're currently getting offered so uh, so then I guess this is what I'm talking about this is the gear we've got same as Gus's XR5000 I think I've updated my stick reader now don't know what I've got it reads the tags and Bluetooth to the wayhead um, we've got a little printer in the shearing shed now that prints out a, um, a barcode. Well, it prints out a deer tag well, um, barcode for that, um, that animal, so that's that animal's individual identification. And so then, uh, we've got weigh bars under the um, wool table, so we just throw the fleece and weigh it. Selecting for higher fleece weight, lower micron. 
Yep, so that's, this is the unintended consequences, I guess. Measuring those three things, I thought, I've got this nailed, we're going, going ahead leaps and bounds, but found that um, we we're actually unintendedly <laughs> um, selecting all the singles out and dropping the um, twins out. So then we have to try and separate those so that we're not um, just selecting for singles. Uh, I guess one of the other problems of um, sort of uh, using EID and using um, sort of maths to select animals rather than looking at them is the visual traits tend to be forgotten. You tend to pick an animal because it's got some pretty good numbers and forget that the animal walking up the race is, well, it could only have three legs. But so you've got to have, um, be ready to, to cull regardless of what the numbers are. Um, so uh, I think I've got another note there. Shearers are not that wrapped when they're standing around waiting for you to get your uh, way head to Bluetooth to your bloody something or other while they're standing there looking at you because they don't have an appreciation for for that type of thing. So pro try and do that before the shearers get there. Um, I'm not sure is this video going to work, Judd? That's a bit easier than rubbing the grease off the tag. You just give it a beat. Print out a barcode like that, so that'll be... Each different shearer, I've got a clipboard for each shearer. And uh, that's the, um, the um, you can see the way bars underneath the wool table. So we pull the um, side sample off the table, so you'll see there, I think that on that fleece, hang on, I put a a rattle now on the side sample instead of pulling it out out in the yard so you get a bit of a find a patch with a blue rattle see so we point at it and there it is there a bit of blue rattle pull that out stick it in a bag and then the little barcode goes in that bag so that you've got the side sample attached to the animal's um, identification we've got a animal identification individual ID down the side and so you've got a say a, the data is the micron of the animal with the fleece the fibre diameter, the greasy fleece weight and the body weight and I send um, all that data away to and um, get it turned into an index. Uh, at the time I'm, it looks like I was using an 8% dual purpose index and uh, and then just ranking the hoggets from um, 1 through to 500 or however many hoggets and that was allowing me to select the, the hoggets that we wanted to keep and cull the ones we didn't want to keep. So. Um, so yeah, check out what we're doing, we've got a, um, well I'm on Twitter a fair bit, some of you might know that, and uh, got a YouTube channel with a few funny videos about what we're up to, so um, yeah, thanks very much. I'd like to thank Chris and Leanne for sharing their expertise with us today about how they're using EID on their property for productivity and profitability. The case studies today are supported by Australian Wool Innovations Extension South Australia, Livestock SA, the South Australian Sheep Industry Fund and the Department of Primary Industries and Regions.